So let's get straight into it. I don't want to be wasting any of your time because I know you are all busy, busy, busy getting ready for the show this Friday. So I'm going to start with the eyes. I would recommend doing your eyes first if you aren't, um, haven't been able to get a slot with me um, at a time that's best for you. I'd recommend doing your eyes first because if they mess up then you can just wipe it all off and start again. And if anything drops down with you using like a black eyeshadow, you can literally just wipe it off, baby wipe some micellar water, anything really to get it off. And then you can put your base on and everything will look perfect. So for you, those of you that are booked in with me and maybe just wanted to watch this video just for the fun of it, um, please come with your full base on, so all your foundation on, brows done and I'll do the rest. So I'll do your eyes, um, I'll do your blusher, your bronzer, highlighter and your lips as well. Um, I would recommend bringing some false eyelashes as well for you to pop on but Gemma's mentioned all that in the post anyway so he's oh no what's happening he's oh no the cracks what I would recommend which I'm going to do first is to apply some of concealer or some of your foundation onto your eye as like a base um, and just kind of put that on and then put the gel eyeliner on, on top so I take some of your foundation and apply that on your lid I'm just taking like a fluffy brush to do this or you could take a sponge or whatever I'm just taking a little bit and you don't need to be precise with this at all you just need to just literally shove it on doesn't matter if you get it in your brows it doesn't matter at all just need to get a nice little base on there if you are coming to me to get your makeup done can you put a little bit of foundation on your eyes as well I'm pretty sure you would anyway but just in case you're watching this video and wondering <laughs> please put a little bit on yourself and like literally you can just shove that all over and that's bish bash bosh done <laughs> kind of thing. so the first thing that we need to do is apply your brows however way that you prefer i prefer using a little brush and a spoolie and the freedom eyebrow pomade in ash brown um which may look a bit dark but you'll see that it suits my brows perfectly when i actually apply it if you want to buy a pomade or anything similar you can get them in Superdrug for i think they're like five pound and they'll last you for like an eternity <laughs> so I'm gonna put my brows on and I'll be back with you in a second my top tip for doing your brows are do it heavier than what you would normally do because you need it to be heavier for on the stage Um, it needs to be scary a little bit not too scary but it needs to be scary and stand out <coughs> voila that is the difference and uh, I always set my brows in place as well with brow gel just to kind of keep the hairs in place and keep it looking a bit more soft and um, so this is the NYX mascara brow gel in the shade black and I know it's black but it's actually not it's not scary at all and I literally just brush this through um, you can get one in Wilkinson's for like $1.99 or $2.99 from the brand Essence and that is absolutely amazing it's got little fibres in it so it makes your eyebrows look nice and thick and full um, yeah it's absolutely amazing you can get there's a blonde one and then there's like a brunette one so the brunette one would be for anybody that's kind of got dark brows like me and blonde for anybody that's got more fairer brows and make sure you go and buy what the actual colour of your brow hair is not the colour on your head because obviously I'm like a grey slash blonde and I go for a black so the first thing we're going to be starting with the eyes is we're going to be taking a small kind of pencil brush which just looks like this and we're going to be putting this shimmery shade underneath our eyes and I don't recommend buying this it's like 20 odd pound for this one colour um, it's not worth buying it at all so if you just find any kind of the brightest shimmeriest white kind of colour that you can find in your collection or for a pound in the shop whatever it is that you can get your hands on grab it and put loads of it underneath the brow bone so which is just here and don't worry if you get some in your brows you can just take your brow gel again and put that back through it to do not worry but you want this intense and we can top this up at the end as well once we've got the rest of our shadows on sorry if you hear anything in the background by the way um i haven't had a chance to film when there's been nobody in the house um so they might hear people in the background but it's all good so basically for the eyeshadow look all you need is a shimmery one one black eyeshadow and you need a black gel eyeliner so i'm going to be using a gel eyeliner that i've got from max and spencer's from the autograph range if you are going to go out and buy one i'd recommend buying the maybelline one because that's what big massive makeup artists rave about so i'd recommend picking up a maybelline one i'm just going to be using the autograph just because 
I feel like it. <laughs> Um, and then for my black shadow, I'm just going to be going in with the W7 palette in the buff. And this is just an affordable, dead cheap palette that you can buy. Um, I think it may be like £4.99 or £5.99, something definitely like that. But obviously you get all these colours in it. If you're going to shop and buy a black eyeshadow or if you've got black eyeshadow in your collection, just use whatever you've got there. That's all I'm doing. Um, and this is going to be using one black shadow and that is literally the eye look. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing first is taking kind of like a hard brush like this so not fluffy at all kind of like a concealer brush and we're going to be dipping this into the gel eyeliner and i want you to really really pack that onto the lash line and on the lid so this is your lash line here and then obviously that's your lid of your eye and then once you've got it all over the lid i want you to i mean i really really want you to pack this on but once you've got it all really in the lash line on the lid i want you to look up as high as possible and it should give you kind of a guideline if you can see my kind of line there and I want you to put the gel eyeliner all the way up to that guideline it doesn't have to be neat because we're going to be blending that out anyway with a black eyeshadow so just blend it up to the top pack on as much as you possibly can so like I said it does not need to be neat at all you're going to be blending it out anyway so it's not a problem so I'm just going to be taking a little brush and I'm going to be packing as much black eyeshadow as I can onto that brush. Tap off a little bit of the excess and I'm going to be patting this onto that gel eyeliner and what that basically does, so I'm using the side of the brush and pressing it into the eyeshadow like this and then pressing it onto my lid and what that basically does is it's setting that gel, excuse the train, <laughs> um, it's setting that gel eyeliner in place so that it will not come off no matter how much you sweat, how much you dance, it should not budge. And don't worry about any of this fallout, this is why we have done the eyes first because we can just wipe all of this off. For anybody that's coming with a base on, don't worry, I'm going to put a thick layer of powder to bake underneath the eye. So any kind of fallout that drops, I'll just wipe it off and it'll just disappear. So don't worry if you get any makeup done by me in the day. So I'm just going to be taking that brush and like I said, just packing that on. And I'm just going to kind of lightly blend out the edges. Just kind of doing little small circular motions. Just to kind of give a bit more of a shape like that, if that makes sense. It looks scary now, but it'll all come together, don't worry. So you're just taking any kind of fluffy brush, big fluffy brushes you can get really, like this. And um, you can buy these all over. Um, you can get them from Technic, does a really, really good one. Um, mine's mucky over there somewhere. <laughs> um, but Technic do a really good one. This one's like 99p off eBay, but obviously it's not going to come in time. So just buy one if you haven't got one from like Boots or Superdrug or somewhere cheap like that. Well, not cheap, but you know what I mean. Try and get it as cheap as possible. Don't be spending loads of moolah. And I'm going to go in with, there's nothing really on this brush. So it's like, sorry, you can't even see that. <laughs> there's nothing really on this brush. And I'm going to be using this brush to circle motions like so. Put your hand as far down the brush as you can, because it means you don't have a lighter touch. And I'm just going to kind of blend out the edges, just to kind of softly diffuse that black eyeshadow. And this can take a little while, so please be patient and just do a little by little because it'll be a lot easier than trying to do it quickly and it'll all just go on kaput and then you have to start all over again. So just take your time with this step. And this is what it should look like at the end, after blending that eyeshadow out on the outer edge. And I'm going to be taking just a large cotton pad, absolutely love these. And just with my gas, Garnier Micellar Water, um, I'm just going to put some of this on the pad and I'm just going to wipe away this excess that's underneath. And when it comes to the outer corner, if you're wiping it away, Try and wipe it away in like a line, like so. So then it's like a nice clean edge. And then for underneath the eye, we're going to be taking a kind of like a very small line brush, like a line, if that makes sense. Um, if you don't have one of these, then you could just use um, the side of the brush that you use to put the eyeliner on to begin with, all over the lid. But this must make it a bit easy for you, a bit more precise. And you're just going to go in with the gel eyeliner just cake onto the brush and we're going to be putting this underneath the eye like so and then we're going to take that little brush that we used earlier that we packed that eyeshadow on with and we're not going to put any more eyeshadow on it because it's going to have a lot on it anyway and we're just going to very lightly just buff that underneath and then taking the big fluffy brush that we used to blend all of that out I'm just going to do that exactly the same and blend all of that out. 
and using that same brush if you are okay with this and it's not going to irritate your eye I'd put this on your waterline as well for any kind of like contact lens wearers like me um, if you feel like they're going to get irritated throughout the day because it is going to be a long day for you at all then maybe skip this step but this will just kind of deepen things up a little bit and then once again just taking another cotton pad just to clean that up you are going to get a lot of fallout if fallout it's a black eyeshadow and you are packing it on so don't worry and then we're going to be taking that shimmery shade from the beginning and the little pencil brush and we're going to pack this on the brush as well and we're going to put this on our inner corner so it's just this part here sorry if you can hear the rain by the way but how much is this rain needed it's absolutely boiling <laughs> and i wanted to kind of meet the black here so i wanted to put it along the waterline a little bit and right in that inner corner and that's just going to make your eyes pop and make them stand out even more so so that is your eye basically done all you need to do then is to add your false eyelashes if you are wearing them i would definitely recommend wearing them because it'll make your eyes pop so much if you don't know how to apply them or have um a bit like worried about applying them and not getting them on properly bring the glue with you and the eyelashes and i'll be able to pop them on on the day for you as well so I'll just bring them along and i'll pop your lashes on but i really really would recommend and i know Gemma um would really recommend as well for you to wear false eyelashes for this look i'd recommend any kind of eyelashes really i'd recommend ones that are big and dramatic or if you want them a bit more a little bit more natural then i would go more natural dramatic i wouldn't go full on natural because you're not going to see them unless you have a dramatic eye lash on anyway because of how dark the eyeshadow is but that's the kind of eyeshadow look that we're going for so really really packed on really really buffed out and a really intense highlight on the brow bone and in the inner corner as well it's the kind of look that we're going for and as for skin, which I know a few people are worried about, I had a couple of you just come over to me and ask about foundations and what I would recommend, etc. So the two from the drugstore, because I don't want you spending loads of money when you can get really good ones from like Boots and Superdrug. Um, the two that I would recommend would be either the Maybelline, what's this one called? Super Stay 24 Hour Full Coverage Foundation, which I absolutely love. The only thing that's um, not the best about this is the fact that the shade range isn't that good. But if you have tan on, you're probably going to be okay. I just know that, for instance, if you are really, really fair, they haven't really got many good shades for it. And if you're really, really dark, the um, darker skinned kind of gals don't have the best shade range either, which absolutely infuriates me when it comes to foundations. I think they brought out like 12 shades, and I'm sorry, but there's not 12 shades of people in this world. Um, so, yeah, if if it doesn't have your shade then i would recommend getting one of the revlon color stay foundations instead so this one um has this one is for combination oily skin which um, i kind of am and um, i got a bit like dry patchiness on my nose and oiliness in my t-zone and then kind of like normal skin here and um, it also has a dry one for people of dry skin as well and the color range on this is absolutely amazing both of them last really really well full coverage um i want you to literally cake this foundation on so if you put it on and you're like oh that looks really nice that's not enough <laughs> i want more and i'm going to be showing you a really good technique to really press that foundation into the skin and get it to last longer and i'm going to be showing a little baking technique as well just because i know some of you are concerned about it sweating off and lasting throughout the day i am going to be there available for touch-ups in the middle of the show i am watching the show by the way but i'll pop out um the song beforehand so i can come out and give you any makeup touch-ups that you may need um so yeah um any kind of foundation touch-ups are going to be really hard to do because you're going to have everything else on top of it your bronzer and your blusher and your highlighter and it's not going to have enough time in the middle for you to put on a full face of foundation again and put all your other bits on top of it as well it's just not going to be possible so your base is going to be so important for that night and day really depending on when you're getting your makeup done so i would recommend let me just find my handy dandy brush so i have any kind of brush like this so ones where there's loads of bristles compact together really really thick brushes like these anything like this they're called buffing brushes and um, these two unfortunately you can't get in um stars you have to order them online but you'll be able to get things similar to this in stars as well i know that like boots smell like smell like smell sell spectrum brushes and stuff like that which will have like a really compact brush like this or even like a real technique brush or even anything that you have in your collection that's really really dense and packed like this because you're going to be pressing it into the skin this one's my favorite for it 
and because that's even more packed than the other one. If you want to put a primer on, it's entirely up to you. Um, I don't really see personally primers don't really make that much of a difference to me. If you have dry skin, I'd recommend putting a primer on, um, just so that if you get flaky bits like I do, and um, where your nose kind of flakes up, or if you get like little dry patches where like foundation clings to, but not in a nice way, then I'd put like a nice little moisturising primer on. Or if you're oily, I honestly don't think that you need to because the bacon will set this in place. So I'm going to be going in with this one, which is like definitely my favourite. So I'm in the shade 10 Ivory. And I know Nicola absolutely loves this as well because I got Nicola onto it or she got me onto it. I can't remember which way around it was. Um, so I'm going to take in two pumps of this. And what I like to do with my foundation, I like to dot it all over. So I'm just going to put it all over my face just so you can see what it looks like. I just can't believe I'm doing my other eye. <laughs> and what I like to do by spreading it across my face is I know that I'm going to be getting the same amount of coverage everywhere instead of me putting all my coverage in a certain place and then running out with foundation and having to get more out. This way I know that I'm putting enough foundation everywhere and if I need to put more on then I can and it'll be an even layer on top of it. So once I've dotted it all over like you can see um, I'm going to be taking my brush like I said my really dense packing brush and I'm just going to tap this into the skin which is another reason why it's good to dot it all over because when you're tapping it you're getting the dotted bits from all over the face and you're not having to rub it in by tapping it and pressing it into the skin it's basically like setting it in place and it's one of the techniques that really 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 big um makeup influencers big people on like makeup artists like P. Louise if you've ever heard of her don't know if you will have but um she is an absolute queen I think she's like nearly like a millionaire now just from doing her um, having a more like makeup academy so this is the technique that you need trust me and you're just literally just tapping it and I don't want it to be like I want it to just be like taps across the skin once you've got it all over that's when you just need to do very little taps and it sets it in place especially this foundation honestly this foundation is absolutely amazing and when it comes to the nose just make sure that you're getting everything all the little cracks and everything when it comes to your eyes, just be gentle underneath there, just kind of, you can turn your brush to the side, or if you're a little bit scared, you could use a sponge, like a beauty blender, or this one is, I don't know, I think this one's like a real technique one, um, any kind of sponge, and just kind of tap it underneath so it blends in with the eyeshadow that you've already done, bis bash bosh kind of thing. If you are going out to buy a foundation, especially for um, the show, and you're going to be buying a dark one, and you're thinking, what a waste of money, um, I'm not going to be able to use that again, because it's going to be so dark, and I'm not ever going to be that dark again. You could buy um, a colour that's kind of similar to your skin tone, maybe just a little bit darker, or even just exactly your skin tone, and buy darkening drops. And what these basically do is, you put your foundation pumps in your hand like normal, and then you'll put some of the darkening drops in there, mix it up with your finger, and it makes the foundation darker, but it means that it's just that one use would be darker, so you've still got the foundation that matches you all the time, and you just put your darkening drops in there as well. Um, so yeah, that's a little tip for you if you don't want to be... Or if you have a foundation that you absolutely love and you want to use that for the show day, you know it's going to last you, you know that it's your holy grail foundation, just buy some darkening drops and then you're not buying a whole new foundation for a shade that you're not going to be that often, if that makes sense. So how I've done that is very, very flawless. Um, it's evened everything out. And this is the kind of look that I would do for a night out. But this is not show ready. So I need to do at least another pump on half my face. Um, just to show you like it needs to be full coverage flawless I want you to look like a doll because then lights are going to wash you out and that's why you need to go ham when it comes to the bronzer wait till we get to that bit <laughs> so I'm just going to focus it on this half my face so you can see the difference so the next bit is probably the most important bit for making it last all day long but also for anybody who has oily skin or whose face sweats a lot I'm a sweaty beast so I totally can relate um, I'm going to be using the Technic Soft Focus Translucent Loose Powder Transparent, sorry should I say um, and you can use any kind of transparent which basically just means it has no colour to it which you'll know anyway but you know what I mean um, and I'm going to be using a sponge to apply this, but you can use a brush, but a sponge will really pack that bad boy on. And just to pre-warn you, powder is going to go everywhere, 
everywhere so make sure you're wearing something over you <laughs> and make sure that you've got some kind of mucky scruffy clothes in our <laughs> clothing on so that you don't get all over and we're gonna bake underneath the eyes which basically just means putting the powder underneath your eyes like so and leaving it there for as long as you possibly can and if you have like smile lines or you get creases around your mouth put it everywhere i would recommend literally baking your full face be a little bit more careful when you're applying it above the brow kind of press it a bit more but remember anything that kind of falls into the brow you can just put your brow gel back on and it'll be fine don't worry but especially the middle of the forehead that's where you might get a bit sweaty Make sure you get that nose as well because that is literally where your foundation is going to break away. So I know this looks crazy but try and leave this on your skin. Obviously do the full skin um, for as long as you possibly can. So whether you can go and have your breakfast or have your lunch depending on what time it is that you start doing your makeup. Do this for as long as possible because this is basically baking your face so it's going to set it in place. And then when you've left it on for as long as you possibly can, obviously today I'm just going to be taking it off pretty much straight away because I don't need it to last that long. <laughs> All you need to take it off is just any kind of powder brush or you can use like a, any brush really, just to kind of flick it off. If you are super, super, super oily, I'd press it in one last time so that then last bits get right into your skin and then whatever's left then flick it off make sure your powder doesn't have an SPF in it though because you will look like a ghost if anyone tries to take flash photography of you <laughs> just to pre-warn you <laughs> and I don't know if you can see but it's kind of left this side of my face with like a velvety touch it looks like it's got whiter but it's just my um, lens it's not actually got light it actually looks darker to be honest <laughs> um, in person so for your bronzer this is where it's going to get scary because when i did gemma's i got really scared by how much i applied but when it when she was on the stage it looked absolutely spot on it looked perfect and this is what's going to be the makeup break for your makeup look basically because if you haven't got enough of this on you are literally just going to look like you've disappeared into the background and no one's going to be able to see your beautiful face so for my bronzer i always use the real techniques blusher brush i know backwards but i use it for my bronzer and I'm going to be using the Face Contour Kit by Sleek in Medium. You can get this light, medium and dark as well. So this might be a good one to pick up if you want to buy um, a bronzer for it. But if not, just use the darkest bronzer that you have. The darker, the better. And you're just going to literally be buffing this. So this is your cheekbone here. And that's where you want it to look more hollow. So you're going to add a shadow. That's what contouring and bronzing is. Bronzing is more to add a bit more of a glow. And contouring is to add a shadow to the face. And when you think, oh, that looks like it's enough, it's not. It is not. <laughs> and that's going to be the scariest part because I love my bronzer, but this scares me how much you have to actually apply for it as well. I also like to put some underneath my jawline like this. And if you've got fake tan on, um, then this will blend in perfectly. Remember to match that foundation to your fake tan and not the colour of your face if you haven't fake tanned your face. Because you want your full body to match. So you can see it just gives so much definition definition to the face. I can't speak today, like so. So I do like to put it up on my temple like this as well, just up here. And then don't forget to just take a little bit and just kind of brush it down the sides of your nose. And this is just so that your nose doesn't disappear as well. You want that to have a bit more colour to it and show that like your full face is this colour. If you want your lips to look a bit bigger, you can pop a little bit just under this bit here which I always want my look bigger, so I do that <laughs> on the daily. And that's what I mean, you want this really, really, really intense. Really intense. <laughs> and then we're going to be going in with possibly one of my favourite steps, and that is highlighter. So you just need a brush that kind of looks a bit like a tulip kind of shape, if that makes sense. Um, and then we're going to be going in, you can go in with that shimmery eyeshadow that you used, because that would tie in really nicely. Um, or whatever kind of highlighter you absolutely love. If you can get your hands on like a sleek highlighter, theirs are amazing as well. Um, or any kind of highlighter really that you love. I love my Jeffree Star one, which is what I use is the eyeshadow. And I love my Doll Light one by Doll Beauty, but there's no 
right or wrong highlighter for you. Whatever is the brightest and the shimmeriest is the one for you. So I'm going to be going in with the doll one first. And you're basically putting this on the top of your cheekbone. So obviously your contour went underneath your cheekbone and this is now at the top of your cheekbone. And taking small circular motions, we're going to just blend. And then you also want to put this on your cupid's bow if you want your lips to look a bit bigger. I also like to put it on the end of my nose as well, just to make your nose pop a little bit too. And then I pop a little bit just on my temples, not much because obviously you don't want it to look sweaty. Mm. And then for blush, I'm just going to be taking a little blush brush, you can use whatever brush you want. Um, the smaller you have it, the more precise it will be, so whatever's easiest for you. And I'm just going to be taking this bright, br bright blush here. And I'm going to focus it on the apples of my cheeks here. And then last but certainly not least would be applying your red lipstick. So I'd recommend going for a liquid lipstick because they're going to be a lot more long lasting. And I'm going to be having this exact same one but a brand new fresh hygienic version at the show for everybody just to put on themselves. Or if you want me to pop it on I can pop it on with you. All I'm going to ask is for you to use a lip brush that's hygienic for the next person. But you can use it at the show if you would like to. And I'm just going to apply mine and I'll be back with you in a second. If you aren't the best at applying a red liquid lipstick, then I'd recommend going in with like a red lip liner. It'll also make it last a bit longer as well. Just a little tip for you. So that is the finished look. If you want to put on your own red lipstick, please bring it along to the show so you can top it off halfway through or in between um, dances if you have time to do that. So this is the finished look. Don't forget to put on your false eyelashes as well and obviously do the other side too. If you have any questions for me at all, please leave them in the comments below this post and I'll reply to them as soon as I possibly can. And I wish you all the best in recreating this look. And if you have any kind of queries or anything that you're, if you have anything that you're worried about or anything that you just want to double check with me, then like I said, leave a comment down below or come and see me on the actual show date and I'll see if there's anything that just needs added or like a bit of bronzer needs putting on and I'll pop that on for you. Okay, doc. So yeah, thank you and I wish you all the best of luck for the show and hopefully... I'll be in the next one with you, but singing. <laughs> Thank you guys, bye.